Popular movies, books, computer games and music veritably teem with apocalyptic visions these days. So what is the appeal? This is the end, beautiful friend. Napalm, a metaphor for hellfire, where common humanity is lost in the inferno. In Apocalypse Now, Francis Ford Coppola depicts the US war in Vietnam as the end. Forty years and many conflicts and tragedies on from the landmark movie, apocalyptic visions in the arts and popular culture have become more direct. The world we know no longer exists in them. World War Z sees Brad Pitt battling against a global zombie epidemic. It's become his highest grossing movie. Why do filmgoers seem to have an insatiable appetite for death and destruction? and the end of the human race. Writer Florian Werner has been interested in the apocalyptic since his days as a PhD student. His most recent book examines all the familiar theories about the day the world comes to an end. German writer Hans Magnus Enzensberger once said the apocalypse is an aphrodisiac. The notion that it could all be over soon is associated with people thinking that they can do what they want. With the usual moral rules now discarded, you can go robbing, marauding or dancing. It's a recurring idea. Party like there's no tomorrow. A thought superstars like Britney Spears have also been attracted to. The song and video keep on dancing as the world falls apart around them. The games industry has also been profiting from pessimism. There's been a spate of games with characters roaming devastated cities bereft of life and hope. Do you think you could tell me what the plan is? to get you home as fast as possible. These days, it doesn't take that much imagination to picture the end. Many people point to our melting polar ice caps and say it's no longer a question of if, but when the Earth will be inundated with floodwaters. Professor Jan Distelmeyer has observed that happy endings are no longer as common in pop songs, books, and above all, films. The inevitability of the end is a big difference. In the 1970s, it was always about Charlton Heston and George Kennedy upsailing out of an airplane cockpit to prevent the worst. There's always collateral damage so that you know it was dangerous. You see destruction in 70s movies like Earthquake or The Towering Inferno, but people were always saved. There was a world after the disaster. Many films nowadays are far bleaker in outlook, and that includes art house cinema. In Melancholia by Lars von Trier, the Earth collides with another planet. No happy ending here. Is anyone seeing this? In the gripping thriller Take Shelter, the protagonist is haunted by apocalyptic visions. Everyone else thinks he's lost his mind, but at the end, his worst nightmares come true. The boom in dark stories like these could be attributed to audiences seeing them as a kind of final warning. Even if you say our generation is incredibly decadent and that we're using up the Earth's resources and driving the planet to ruin, there's a flip side to the negative. People saying, OK, so now it's in our hands. It's our decision. And that lends a certain meaning to our own existence. The 2013 film Elysium depicts the Earth as a wasteland, populated by an abandoned underclass, while the wealthy have found refuge on a space station. Viewers are presented with a dystopia that highlights the gulf between rich and poor. In his book about catastrophes and capitalism, Jan Distelmeyer looks at whether the recent surge in end-of-the-world movies is a result of the financial crisis. 
What I find interesting is that the word apocalypse doesn't actually apply. The Judeo-Christian tradition of the apocalypse envisages something happening afterwards, something for the better, the true, the beautiful and the good. It's that promise that I find missing in our discourse about the financial crisis. Can the world be bailed out if the banks fail? The future looks bright for disaster movies, at least. Next year, we'll see Pompeii buried again under lava and ash on the big screen. Viewers can rest assured that the eruption of Vesuvius did not mean the end of the world. That's all from Arts21. For more, go to our website at dw.de slash culture.